this is the circuit diagram for a three phase semiconverter. This is arranged in a bridged pattern, but the lower portion of the circuit contains only diodes. And since this is a resistive load, we don't need to use this freewheeling diode. So again, when it comes to triggering, we only need to trigger these thyristors. But to understand the operation of this circuit, we need to go through the basics. So in this case, as we have already discussed, this D2 will be triggered as the anode of this D2 is provided with the highest voltage. But in case of a common anode system, this thing will be reversed. Since the other part of the circuit is connected to the ground, the diode with the lowest voltage in cathode will turn on. So in this case, if D4 turns on, D5 and D6 will automatically get reverse biased. So in case of a common cathode, a high voltage will turn on the diode, but in case of a common anode, the lowest voltage will trigger the diode. So if we compare it with our semiconverter circuit, we will have similar situation. And again, as the load isn't directly connected to this neutral portion, we will always get a maximum voltage which is equal to the line voltage. Unlike the previous circuit where the second terminal of the load is connected to the neutral, in this circuit no neutral connection is provided to the load. So the load voltage will always be equal to the line voltage. So we have to draw the line voltage diagram as well. So in case of a ABC sequence star connected system, the VAB will start 30 degree before VAM. So after VAB, VBC will start and the gap will be 120 degree or 4 blocks. Again after 4 blocks, VCA will start. So again, in order to draw the outputs correctly, we need to first draw the inputs correctly. You can increase the accuracy of your drawing by paying attention to these intersections. These intersections will always touch the 30 degree lines. Uh, and again, I have forgotten to mention that I have changed the orders of the thyristors as it is written in the books. So, in case of a semi-converter, uh, let me zoom in a bit. This T1, T2 and T3 seems fine. But this D2, D3 and D1, it's a little bit odd. So I have changed it to D1, D2 and D3 to maintain a symmetry. So this pattern shouldn't be memorized as it is in this book because uh, if you draw it like this, D1, D2, D3, it will be much simpler. So D1 is connected to A, D2 is connected to B and D3 is connected to C, just like the thyristors. So the triggering will be similar to that of a half-wave converter. These will be 120 degree apart. For the sake of simplicity, consider all of these to be diodes. So T1 will be turned on when the voltage A is highest and 
D1 will be turned on when the voltage of A is the lowest. The same thing will happen in the next branch. T2 will turn on when B is highest and D2 will turn on when B is lowest. Again, when C is highest, T3 will turn on and a lowest value of C will turn on D3. Since these thyristors and diodes are connected to line to line voltage, we need to concentrate on the line voltage diagram. So the pair T1 and D2 will turn on when voltage of A is highest and voltage of B is lowest. So a highest A and a lowest B means highest VAB since VAB is the difference between VA and VB. So in this portion of the waveform the value of VAB is highest. So if we go to the conduction diagram, this portion will be suitable for T1 and D2 to turn on. So again, when VBC is highest, that means VB is highest and VC is lowest. So a uh, highest value of B will turn on T2 and a lowest value of C will turn on D3. So in this section of this waveform, both T2 and D3 will be turned on. And again, same goes for VCA, where T3 and D1 will be turned on. So again, if we concentrate on the lower portion of the waveform, this portion here VCA is positive and here VCA is negative. So a negative VCA means VAC. So if we flip that waveform, this will become VAC. So in order to make VAC highest, we need to make VA highest and VC lowest. So in this case, T1 and D3 will be turned on. So this has been illustrated in this conduction diagram. So in this portion, T1 and D3 will conduct. So same thing goes for VBA. If we flip this portion, it will become VBA. So in case of a VBA, T2 and D1 will be turned on in this section. The same thing goes for T3 and D2. So these are probable conduction zones. As the upper portion of the bridge doesn't contain any diode, these are thyristors. So apart from this conduction zone, we need to trigger this T1, T2 and T3 in order to get conduction. So if we trigger T1 at this point of the crossover point at alpha equals 0 with respect to crossover point, the T1 will turn on and the D2 will be automatically turned on due to this low voltage at or the lowest voltage at point B. So if we get back to our phase voltage diagram, this point of VBN is indeed the lowest voltage among all other voltages. So D2 will be automatically turned on and if T1 and D2 is on, the current will flow from A through T1, through load, through D2 to B. So the positive terminal of the load will be connected to phase A and the negative terminal of the load will be connected to phase B. So we will get VAB across the load. So in this conduction period, we will get the waveform similar to VAB. 
so this portion of VAB will be copied directly to the output waveform so after this period T1 and D3 is the probable conduction zone here T1 is already triggered and D3 will be automatically triggered because D3 will be triggered when the value of C is the lowest and in this section the value of Cn is indeed the lowest so D3 will be turned on automatically and if T1 and D3 is turned on we will get a voltage Va and Vc so Vac so this portion of the output wave will contain the waveform of Vac since Vac is nothing but the flip version of VCA this Vac waveform will be positive as opposed to this negative VCA so in this portion we are triggering T2 and D3 will be turned on automatically because the value of C is still the lowest so T2 is connected to phase D and D3 is connected to phase C so we will get V B C so in this portion the output voltage will be copied from this portion of VBC and again after this point T1 will be automatically turned off because T1 will be only conducting during this and this region after this region the T2 and D3 will conduct so if we move a bit further this area will be occupied by T2 and D1 so if T2 and D1 is connected we will get V B A because T2 is connected to B and D1 is connected to A so in this portion we will have V B A since the value of V A B is negative here the V B A will be the flip version of V A B after that we will have T3 and D1 hence V C A and right after that T3 D2 V C B and again V C B can be derived from V B C by flipping it here and after that VAB will start again for the next cycle so VAB will be repeated keep something in mind you don't need to draw the waveform beyond twice pi so you only need to draw the waveform within the grids so 0 to twice pi so for alpha equal 30 degree this waveform will be shifted 30 degree further so the gap between this triggering will remain the same 120 degree just the whole thing will move 30 degree forward so here D2 is turned on but but we are not getting any voltage until we turn on T1 so when T1 is triggered at this portion we will have the output voltage which is equal to VAB just like the previous diagram but it will be shifted 30 degree but at this point D2 will be turned off because of the fact that the cathode of the D2 is not the lowest voltage so at this point the cathode 
of D3 will be lowest which is VCM so from that point on T1 and D3 is turned on so we will get VAC so in this section both T1 and D3 is turned on because T1 will be turned off only when T2 is turned on so T2 is turned on at this section so until T2 is turned on both T1 and D3 will continue to conduct so after that we will have T2 D3 which is VBC and the cycle will continue so if we increase the angle by another 30 degree with respect to this crossover point we will have something like this which is 60 degree with respect to this crossover point and the relative gaps will remain the same so in this case we are not utilizing T1 and D2 because we are triggering T1 at this point so so from that moment on T1 and D3 is on and T1 will be turned on until T2 is triggered so we will have VAC because of T1 and D3 from this portion to this zero crossing portion after that T2 is triggered and D1 is automatically on so we will have VBA and after that due to T3 and D2 we will have VCB if we continue to increase the angle by another 30 degree which is alpha equal 90 degree with respect to this crossover point here is a quick reminder each block is of 30 degree so 3 blocks means 90 degree with respect to this crossover point so T1 is turned on at this moment so we will have our output from that moment on and we will have VAC due to T1 and D3 but after this point the value of VAC or VCA will go to zero so the current will also go to zero since it is a resistive load the voltage and current waveform is in phase so as the voltage reaches zero so does the current so if you can remember a thyristor turns off when the current goes below holding current so here the current becomes zero so it will turn off the thyristor T1 so in this portion nothing is turned on D1 is turned on but D1 alone cannot complete the circuit so in this portion there will be a discontinuity after that T2 and D1 is on and for that we will have VBA and after another discontinuity we will have T3 and D2 hence VCB so this portion of VCB will continue to the next cycle so if we analyze the VDC and VRMS equation the span or the time period of the output voltage waveform will be same this is 120 degree apart or 4 blocks apart the pattern is repeating after 4 blocks so T is uh, 
twice pi over 3 uh, I mean 120 degree so 1 by 120 degree and the limits are pi by 6 plus alpha so in this case alpha equal 90 and pi by 6 means 30 so the overall angle is 120 degree so you can tell it by looking at the graph the waveform is starting after four blocks so four blocks means 120 degree and it is stopping at pi plus 30 degree which means 210 degrees so in order to find the VDC we need to find the area under this curve so the limit will be 120 to 210 for this example so same thing will happen for VRMS and these formulas are elaborated in in this book page 99 4 54 and 4 56 so these are the same equations so this this continuity will happen after alpha equal or greater than 60 degree so if we get back to our continuous conduction mode this will be restricted from alpha equals 0 to 60 so in this case the waveform will be divided by two parts first part is VAB and the second part is VSE and as the pattern is repeating we only need to consider this section this four block section means 120 degree period so the period will remain the same 120 degree and the limit will change so the first limit will be 30 degree plus alpha in this case alpha equal 30 so 30 plus 30 means 60 so the starting point will be 60 degree and the ending point of VAB is 90 degree so in this case 60 degree to 90 degree for VAB plus the area of this waveform this waveform of VSE is starting from pi by 2 or 90 degree and it ends at 180 degree so in this example it has started at 90 degree and it ends at pi pi by 6 means 150 degree plus 30 degree in this case as alpha equal 30 so 180 degree so if we put these values in these equations we will get the area under these curves combined so we will get VDC and same thing is applicable for VRMS and in case of alpha equal 60 both continuous and discontinuous equation will apply because this is the verge of discontinuity it is neither continuous nor discontinuous so both equations will be applicable here